everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video. I hope you're all really well and you're having a good day. So today I'm here to share with you my top five sewing patterns for woven tops. I recently shared a video sharing my top five dress sewing patterns and it seemed to do quite well so I thought I'd continue this series by sharing some more of my favourite patterns and I thought today I would do woven tops and then maybe another day if it's of interest I might do one on knit fabric um, sewing patterns for tops as well so let me know if you'd like to see that too. Before I get started if you are new to my channel my channel is all about sewing and making and sometimes knitting and other crafts as well lots of sewing inspiration sew alongs um, fabric hauls and sewing plans and things like that so if you're into sewing and making as well I'd love to have you as a subscriber if you do enjoy this video I'd love it if you gave it a like and um, please don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos I do tend to post weekly mainly on a Sunday morning so if you click that bell, you won't miss out on any future videos. So let's get into my top five woven sewing patterns for tops then. So first of all, I will share with you the pattern for what I'm wearing today. Um, this is one of my favourite sewing patterns um, for tops. And it's one that's only just recently come out really. And that is the Patina Blouse by Friday Pattern Company. So here's the pattern image of the blouse. The one I'm wearing today is actually made from quite a busy fabric, so it's probably quite hard for you to see all of the details of the blouse. But it's a really lovely v-neck um, flat collar blouse that can be made either with a long sleeve or a short sleeve. Just flip the page and show you the line drawings as well. And I will pop in an image of the line drawings too, because sometimes I know they don't show up too clearly on the camera. But um, yeah, there's, there's some really lovely details in this blouse. So it's made with quite a deep v-neck to the front which actually can be made in two depths so you can have it higher like I've got here or if you want a really super low cut um, v to your blouse you can actually make it with a lower neckline which is really nice if, um, if you like that kind of detail. Um, so it's made with a lovely pointed flat collar to the front as well. It's completely buttoned down right to the bottom and you can either make it with a lovely gathered sleeve. So the sleeves are quite full and then they gather into a little cuff at the wrist with a button. So they open and close, it's not elasticated. Um, and you can also make it with a short sleeve and then the back of the blouse has a lovely gathered yoke detail as well. So lots of really pretty details to this blouse. So it's designed for light to medium woven fabrics um, and like lots of different tops and lots of different patterns depending on the type of fabric you use the effect that you get of your blouse will be different so I've used quite a drapey viscose for my version here um, which feels really nice to wear and then obviously you can see hopefully here at the wrist detail you get quite a sort of a drapey gathered effect um, to your sleeve. But obviously if I'd have used something with a bit more structure like a cotton or a cotton lawn or a linen or something then you gathered sleeves and um, sort of gathered tops and your yoke detail at the back would be much more poofy. <laughs> so the gathers would be much more emphasised so it depends really on what you want your finished blouse to look like as to which kind of fabric you go for. I always prefer to go for a more drapey fabric because that's just what I feel more comfortable wearing um, so I think a viscose or a rayon or something drapey would look really nice and works really well. In terms of sizing Friday Pattern Company patterns are really size inclusive so they go from a size XX up to a 7X so from a 32 inch chest up to a 60 inch chest so really quite size inclusive obviously because this is a blouse you only really need to take into consideration your chest or your bust measurement but it might be helpful to take into consideration the waist measurement as well. So I've used a fair few Friday Pattern Company patterns now and I have to say their instructions are brilliant. They really hold your hand the whole way through, they're really clear um, and the good thing about Friday Pattern Company as well is that they do have a YouTube channel which has quite a lot of sew alongs on it so I actually watched a sew along um, of making this blouse before I actually went ahead and made it and I found it really easy to just watch that through before I went ahead and sewed up my own version. So it can be really helpful to just watch those YouTube videos through if there's anything within the pattern that you're a bit unsure of or that you're a bit nervous of trying. I was a little bit nervous of the collar at first but I have to say I really enjoy making collars. I think it's really a satisfying thing to do and because it's quite a flat collar this one you don't have to worry about putting it on a stand or anything like that um, and it's really nice and neatly um, finished off inside as well so it looks really nice from the inside and the outside. 
So I really love this pattern um, for the shape of the blouse. I love the style of it. But I also like the fact that it can be um, changed around, that you can change the sleeve length, so you can have a long sleeve or a short sleeve. I would really like to try a sleeveless version of this because I think that would look really, really nice for summertime and I think it would look lovely if you just narrowed in the shoulder seams a little bit and took in the armhole. Um, and probably bias down the armholes or maybe you can make a facing and I think that would make a really cute little summer blouse as well. I have seen various different versions of this top hacked into a dress and that looks really good as well so you could maybe take the top of this blouse pattern and shorten it slightly and add a gathered skirt in and that would look really lovely. I always like to look at a pattern when I buy one and just see what elements of the pattern I can swap around and hang about and change it to different um, garments as well because I think that's a really good way to get your money's worth out of a pattern and there's lots of different elements in this particular pattern that you can take and use in other designs and other garments. So in terms of skill level for this pattern, um, I would say maybe an adventurous beginner or maybe an intermediate sewist just because of the collar and some of the kind of smaller, fiddlier details in this blouse, say the cuffs um, and everything. But if you're feeling confident and you have a few garments already under your belt, then I think you could absolutely give this a go. And if you wanted to make it easier, then make the short sleeve version because then you don't have the cuffs to do and all the gathering at the wrist and everything like that. And that would just make it slightly easier. So that's my first pattern choice. It's the Patina Blouse by Friday Pattern Company. So number two on my list of favourite top patterns is actually the Ogden Cami by True Bias and I just felt like I couldn't not include this pattern because it's such a great one and um, it's just so versatile. So I love this Ogden Cami pattern uh, because it's so simple and quick and easy to whip up and you can make it, depending on what size you make of course and what length you want to go for, you can actually get it out of a metre of fabric. So it's a really good one, um, it's a really good kind of stash busting one and it's one that you can buy nicer, more expensive fabrics for and you don't necessarily need a lot of fabric to do it. Um, so yeah, I thought I would include this one. So the Ogden Cami is a really kind of simple style cami top with a V-neck, um, a half facing is included so that it's all nice and neatly finished inside and then it has really thin sort of spaghetti straps to the shoulders. This one is actually best for lightweight woven fabrics. Um, I think something drapey works really nicely, although I have seen lots of nice sort of cottony, cotton lawn versions as well. But I think if you make it from say a viscose or a rayon or a crepe, you get that really nice sort of drapey cami effect. I've made quite a few different versions of this top now and my most favourite one of all is the one that I've made from an ivory crepe fabric because not only is it lovely and comfy to wear, it's a great one to wear under say hand knitted cardigans or short bought cardigans or shirts or anything like that really or even dresses and skirts and I wear it a lot with my spy trousers and things like that. It really is just a good wardrobe staple so I think it works really nicely in something really drapey and comfy. So in terms of sizing, True Bias patterns range from a size 0 to a size 18. A 0 is a bust 32 and an 18 is a bust 44.5. Um, so reasonably size inclusive, but possibly not as good as the Friday Pattern Company um, size range that I've just shared. Um, but yeah, such a lovely pattern. So I've made various different versions of this pattern now and I think it's a really good one to hack around. So I've made the dress version of this and the way that I did that was just to cut the top, um, I think I actually cut it up to the facing line actually, so it's really quite short and baby doll length on you and then I've added a full gathered skirt and that made a really nice cami dress, um, so that was a really good one to try. I know lots of people have just simply lengthened the cami down made it slightly more A-line at the side to make a really good slip dress that you can wear, you can layer over t-shirts and long sleeve tops in the winter time or obviously it's a really good one for summer wear as well. Um, I've recently made another version of this pattern and just added a little frill to the shoulders, I've just added a frill to the spaghetti straps and that looked really cute as well. So I think although this is a really simple pattern, it's just one that can be used in so many different ways and I do love that in a pattern. It's also a great one for beginners as well because there aren't too many parts to fix together. It's quite a simple construction. So yeah, really good one for beginners. And that's why I decided to include the Ogden Cami. 
Number three in my list is actually the Megan Nielsen Sudley dress and top pattern. So I was thinking about this pattern last night when I was coming to think about all of the patterns that I wanted to include and I realised that I've never actually made the dress version of this pattern as it is. I've only ever made the top version and I have made a dress using the bodice of this pattern but I've not actually made the dress as it is. So that was a long winded way of me saying that this <laughs> pattern can be made as either a top or a dress and there are lots of different variations to this pattern and different things that you can try with it. So I've actually got the older version of the pattern um, cover here. It has since been updated with a longer sleeve detail as well so you can actually make it with a long sleeve and I believe it's got a gathered elasticated cuff which looks really nice as well. Um, but I've made a few different versions of the top now and the top just has some really nice variations to it. So if I just pop an image in of the line drawings you can see the different variations that you can make. So it's really quite a boxy sort of style, um, straight top. It has a really pretty keyhole opening at the neckline and the keyhole can actually be worn at the front or at the back. So the keyhole ties up with a lovely sort of um, thin tie <laughs> which you can tie into a bow and you can either wear the bow at the front or the back. You can add a really sweet little Peter Pan collar if you'd like to and I've made a version using the Peter Pan collar and it was just so lovely to make. I do love making a collar um, and this one is really really pretty and I've used the collar on this top and I've also used it on a different top as well as part of a hack. Um, so again, lots of parts of this pattern that can be used for different things and taken out and swapped around and um, hacked in different ways and yeah, as I say, I really like that in a pattern. So um, yeah, I think this is a really good one for beginners. It's quite a simple style, particularly if you make version 2, which is just the version with the keyhole neckline and the short sleeves because it really is quite a simple style top. Probably the fiddliest bit about making that particular version is just attaching the bias binding to the neckline and the keyhole and then um, extending the ties, but you could actually use short bought bias binding to finish those things and you could even use say ribbon or something if you didn't want to make your own ties. So there are ways to make uh, making that top easier if you're not too keen on making your own bias binding and things like that. Um, but yeah I just think this is such a pretty top. I love Megan Nielsen patterns because there are always so many different variations to the pattern pieces, um, there are always so many different ways that you can mix and match her pattern pieces. The patterns are drafted really, really nicely and um, the instructions are always great as well. So in terms of sizing, this pattern ranges from a size XS to a size XL and the XS is actually bust 34 and um, XL is bust 42. So I'm actually a bust 32. So really this should be a bit oversized on me but I've never found it to be too big. I find it to be quite sort of nice fitting really, there's quite a lot of ease in there and it's always been quite comfortable to wear so I don't find it too big at all. So maybe just check the finished garment measurements if you want to be sure what size to make. This is designed for a woven fabric. I think again depending on which type of woven fabric you use you'll get a different effect every time. So I've made my tops in a viscose fabric which is nice and drapey and um, on a couple of my tops I've actually added a little peplum detail around the bottom to give a really cute sort of peplum skirt effect and I made both of those versions in a viscose fabric so they were really nice and drapey and nice to wear. Um, I've also made a version in a cotton lawn fabric which had a really pretty embroidered scalloped edge at the bottom and that just added a little bit of detail um, to an otherwise plain top and that worked really nicely for winter time too and it was really nice and easy to sew up. So yeah, lots of different um, variations to this pattern, lots of different options. It has really great hackability as well and that's why I wanted to include the Sudley top pattern in my top five. The next pattern I wanted to include, and I tried to include a sort of range of different um, sewing abilities in this little list as well. Um, and one that I absolutely love is the Even Tee by Sew Explicit Patterns. And this is actually a pattern that I got from Makerist as part of collaboration with them. Um, but I wanted to include this one because it's such a simple, such a sort of unexpectedly amazing pattern. <laughs> um, and I don't mean that to sound, I don't mean that to run the pattern down in any way, it's just that um, sometimes 
these sort of simple style patterns, they can be overlooked. And I just think that if you have a pattern like this, much like the Ogden cami in a way, it's just such a staple and it's a really good basis for other things. And um, you can switch things around and change things up, like I've been saying. Um, so this one is such a simple sew. So you can make it actually in a woven fabric or you can make it in a knit fabric. So it's quite a versatile one, this one. Um, but the best thing about this is that it's literally just two pattern pieces. It's a front and a back, and then the armholes, the neckline, and the bottom band are all finished with bias binding. Um, so yeah, a really, really quick and simple one. The shoulders are sewn together, and the sides are sewn together, and then you finish off your hem, and your neckline, and your armholes with bias binding. Or, if you don't want to bias bind your armholes, you can actually just turn over the hem as you would normally, um, and you could use shop bought bias binding to go around the neckline if you wanted to, or if you were using jersey fabric, you could actually just turn it under and um, hem or top stitch around the neck. So yeah, super simple one, a great one for beginners, that's why I wanted to include this one really. And again, I just think this one is such a good one for showing off lots of different fabrics. So if you made this in a jersey, I know I'm not supposed to be talking about jersey patterns in this video, but if you did make it in a jersey, it would be such a simple, nice sort of wardrobe staple. You can make it in a plain fabric and it would just be one that went with everything. But likewise, if you made it in a really lovely viscose, I've made this in a very lovely viscose fabric that I found from John Lewis. And it's one of my favorite tops. And the reason for that is just because the fabric is so lovely. Um, and the simple sort of nature of this top just shows off the fabric really well. So yeah, I was really, really pleased with how that turned out. And um, again, if you wanted to dress it up, you could make this in a really sparkly, glittery fabric and it would be great for a Christmas party or a wedding or something like that. Um, and yeah, just a really quick and simple one that looks different depending on what fabric you use. In terms of sizing for this one, quite a wide range of sizes. It comes in a size six to a size 20. It's another good one for hacking as well because as you can see from the pattern image, it does have a really nice sort of curved high-low hem which looks really flattering if you wear it outside of jeans or shorts or whatever. Um, but you could actually just hack this curved hem off and make it as a really nice cropped boxy style top and you could have it as a straight hem really easily if you prefer that look. So yeah, lots of potential there. I think again, you could just crop the t-shirt and you could add a skirt to it, you could add a, add a gathered skirt or you could quite easily lengthen the whole thing down and have a really simple shift style dress which would look really nice in the summertime especially if you made it in a jersey fabric that would look really good too. So that's why I wanted to include this one, just a great all-rounder and a really good wardrobe staple. So last on my list is actually another Friday Pattern Company pattern. I hope you don't mind me using the same pattern company twice, but I do absolutely love this pattern as well and it is the sagebrush top. So I absolutely love the sagebrush top pattern. I loved it as soon as it came out. I'll pop an image in here because I've just realized I don't actually have the image printed out. I've just got the PDF pattern pieces and then I've been using the instructions on my computer. Um, but I'm sure we all know the sagebrush top pattern. It's been so popular in the sewing community, mainly because of the big puffy sleeves that the sagebrush top has. So I've made two different versions of the sagebrush top now. But I've actually not yet made a version of the top that's based just on the pattern pieces. And that is because I, when it first came out, I actually thought the big puffy sleeves maybe weren't quite for me. So instead I added the sleeves from the Fibre Mood Norma pattern and for me that worked really well and really nicely. But I think this summertime I'm going to have another go at the sagebrush top and I'm going to do the proper sleeves and see how I feel in those. Again, it's another one where you'll get a different effect depending on which fabric you use. I think I will definitely use a drapey fabric if I'm gonna be making the big sleeves because then you'll get more of a drapey effect and your sleeves will be less puffy. If you use, again, if you use like a linen or a cotton or a cotton lawn or something, then your sleeves will have a much more sort of puffy structured effect. So really it depends on what you want your end result to be. So I've already gone through the Friday Pattern Company size range and it's exactly the same in the sagebrush top as it is for the patina blouse. So I won't go through the sizing again, but I will say that I think the sagebrush top is a really good one for beginners because 
It's quite a simple design. So there's a lovely yoke detail at the front there, and then there's a really cute sort of gathered frill that runs along the yoke. Um, I think you could quite easily take the frill out if you didn't want to have the frill included. And I have actually seen a few people do that over on social media, on Instagram and things, and that looks quite nice if you're not keen on the frill detail. Otherwise, there are no real fastenings to this top that you need to fiddle around with like buttonholes or anything because the back is just finished with a tie, um, a keyhole tie. So really quite nice and simple to make and the neckline is just finished with bias binding as well so there's no facings or anything to make. You can make your own bias binding but equally you could use shop bought bias binding and that would make your life easier as well. So yeah, I really, really love the sagebrush top pattern. It's such a pretty style. I really love the smock style of it. I actually cropped mine to be more um, sort of hip length because the actual sagebrush top pattern does come down quite long, which is nice if you want to tuck it in. But for me, I wanted to have it out over jeans and things. So I cropped it up to kind of mid hip level and I really like that length on me. So a couple of hacks that I'm planning to use this pattern for I would really like to make a sleeveless version of this for the summertime and just take the sleeves out completely, um, take in the shoulder seams again and probably just bias bind the armholes and I'd love to make that in sort of a drapey white um, fabric of some kind, maybe like a crepe or something. I think that would look really pretty with shorts and jeans and things in the summer. Um, I have seen this pattern hacked into a dress quite a lot, um, again over on Instagram, and I think that really looks nice as well. So you, again, you could crop the length of the, um, the top and then you could add a gathered skirt or you could simply lengthen it down again. Um, there are lots of different things you could do with this top. So I absolutely love the style of the top because I am attracted to the puffy sleeve detail, even though I haven't been brave enough to go there myself yet. But I am planning to in the summer, as I say. But again, I just think it's a really good one that you can take elements of the pattern from, and much like I did with my longer sleeves, you can sort of mix and match elements from other patterns that you have, different sleeves and things like that. And you can add them to the sagebrush top pattern just to get a completely different effect every time. So I really wanted to include the sagebrush top pattern one, because I think it's so pretty, but also because I think it's a really good one for beginners and there are lots of different ways that you can hack it around and change it up. So that brings me to the end of my top five woven sewing patterns for tops. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I'd love to know in the comments below what your favourite top patterns are because it's really interesting to see um, what other patterns people favour and I love to know the patterns that people return to time and time again. Um, it's always good for inspiration, but it's always just really interesting as well to see what we all like and what our tastes are. So if you have enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you gave it a like. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If there are any other top five pattern videos that you'd like me to make, then let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely add those to my list for future videos. Otherwise, I'll leave the video here and just say have a lovely day and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!